I started experimenting with liner cutting and printing last month and I've done a few pieces since then but I really wanted to make this design into more of a series so I thought I might as well make a video about it. This might be really boring but I'm doing it. So as you can see I've already done some test prints of this. I didn't have any special paper so this is just like sheets pulled out of one of my sketchbooks. Um, my big inspiration here is Aki Tagawa. She's a Tokyo based ceramic artist. Um, I'm obsessed with everything on her page basically, but specifically these kimono wearing skeleton designs. So what I started looking at were these traditional Japanese woodblock prints uh, by artists such as Yoshitoshi Tsukioka and Kitagawa Utemaro. Most of these are from the 18th and 19th centuries. The art style here is ukiyo-e, which means pictures of the floating world. A typical subject of ukiyo-e is like beautiful ladies, so like what I draw all the time anyway. Um, but also like nature and landscape. I don't know. Obviously I'm cutting lino rather than woodblocks, but I'm using the bijunga, the pictures of beautiful women, as references and inspiration. Because beauty is fleeting. And guys, it's, everyone's gonna die. Memento mori, I just had a birthday. It's fine. I would love to show you like my beautiful aesthetic curated workspace um, but actually it's a pile of crap so um, just imagine like a room full of boxes that I've put a desk in and you've got it. So here's what I did and how I did it. I've done pencil sketches to fit the size of my lino pieces and these are being traced and then flipped over and transferred onto the lino. I don't want to draw it straight on from the outset because it will print backwards and if you've ever flipped a piece of digital art you'll know that however good it looked initially it will always look like shit when you flip it. So instead I'm doing this super laborious bit which involves me redrawing each of the three designs like four times. I'm not using anything very fancy here equipment wise, it's a little kit with a few different blades that you can swap out. I pretty much only use the smallest tip and then a wider one for the bigger areas. Also, I don't really plan which bits are going to be black and which are going to be white beforehand, even though I probably should. I know the skeleton's going to be white and I just do what feels right or what gives the most contrast. This is called bullshitting your way through life and 60% of the time it works every time. I did want to say thank you for a lot of supportive comments I got recently. It really means a lot to me that people enjoy my videos. Uh, some people have said that I should upload more often and I completely agree. <laughs> When I first started this channel I'd just gone freelance basically and now I work full time. Um, when the pandemic happened I was a bit like, okay silver lining, I can do a lot of the projects I've had planned. And then I didn't. But to be fair the world was ending so can't really hold that against myself. But also the videos and the projects I've shared have got more elaborate and I do do... <laughs> do do. <laughs> I do everything myself. Not just the stuff on camera, but the filming and the editing and everything, so it is time consuming. Basically what I'm trying to say is I do want to post more regularly and I know that my channel would grow faster if I did, but yeah. What I did think is, because obviously I did um, a bunch of te test prints of the first design of this that I don't really have anything to do with. They're only on like box standard paper, but if anyone would like one of those, I like a bit wonky and patchy but if you don't mind that sorry plan um yeah like dm me on instagram or something because i think it'd be quite nice to send those to people that's the sort of thing that if i had a patreon would be a great idea but i don't it's a tough shit So I've done about a zillion of these prints now because I wanted to try out a few paper options. 
Like I mentioned, my test paper was just sketchbook paper. It actually came out pretty nicely. I did want to try um, this like recycled cotton rag paper, but it was actually way too heavyweight and textured and just not for printing, so. So for my next attempt, I got this, I'm gonna pronounce this badly, Clairefontaine Simile Japon paper, which the internet recommended. Also, I should note here that I'm just not very good at printing. The carving part, fine. Um, but yeah, it turns out I'm really bad at printing, which I didn't know a person could be bad at. I'm cleaning my equipment off, mostly using vegetable oil and kitchen paper, but I did have the master idea after this one of using oil in a spray bottle. It's so much easier and less messy, and I feel like I'm kind of a genius for coming up with that, even though I'm sure it's an established thing that many other people have thought of. Time to look at some prints. The Clairefontaine prints obviously came out the best, but probably part of that at least is due to me getting better at printing with practice. Even though the sketchbook paper is nothing special, I do like the prints on it. I think it brings up quite a nice texture, but it's not as consistent as the Clairefontaine. Some of these are pretty patchy, which I don't think looks terrible, but it's not like a consistent outcome. So if I were gonna sell prints or whatever in the future, this would be the one I'd use. Now I have a lot of pictures of skeletons and not really any idea what to do with them. So, that's fine. 